Hi, Advanced Algebra. I want to show you how to do uh, problems from 7-6. Uh, and this is going to be for the homework, I believe. Let's take a quick look. 7-H. 7-H. I usually instruct you to go to the textbook. Remember, the Chapter 7 text is always at the first item in the chapter, Exercises. And instead of having you look at it, let's look at it quickly together here. Okay. We're going to do something called composite functions, which simply means we're going to plug and chug one function, get an output, and then plug and chug the output into the other function. I know those are big heavy words there, and this kind of symbol logic looks a little different here, but let's just take a quick look. This tiny little circle here, that little hollow circle, that's called your composite symbol. Okay, your composite symbol. So in your notes right now, I want you to pause the video and I want you to rewrite this statement right here. Okay, this is G composite F of X. So this is plug and chug function stuff. And in this case, we're gonna plug and chug twice. We're gonna plug and chug in the inside function. And the way I always want you to think about it is you plug and chug the closest function first. So we're gonna plug and chug F first. And if you come in here, see in blue, listed as number one, evaluate the inner function first. Now that is a huge idea, the inner function. All the way through calculus two, you wanna recognize functions that are inside other functions. So this is just the beginning of something that you wanna um, uh, get better and better at and recognizing what's inside of what. G is the outside function, so whatever you get as an output here, we're gonna plug and chug there. There's two methods that they use in their example. They actually plug and chug the whole expression, like see this F, F is X minus two. Well, they actually can plug and chug the whole expression into G of X in this sense. Um, I've joked about that. Remember, we can plug and chug a name in here. What's F of David? You know, and F of David would be whatever the instructions are for F. So David minus two. So make sure you get a feel for that. So one method here, method one, is to take the whole expression, plug it into, right here, the G function. And the G function says, hey, square it. So you would just square this value. Uh oh, be careful of poster mistake if you did expand it. The other method, which is the way that I tend to encourage at this stage, is method two. Just evaluate the number for f of x first and then take it to the G function and evaluate that. For instance, F of negative five. Let's go find F, there it is. Let's put a negative five in right here and right there, and we're gonna get negative seven. And you can see they get that right there. Now let's go find the G function. Square whatever you give it. So negative seven, parentheses, that's negative seven times negative seven. Negative seven squared is 49. Same answer occurs over here, but that's the basics of it. All right, let's try some of the homework problems or problems very similar to the homework. On this submission, you're gonna take a picture of your homework, so be nice and organized. Make your notes nice and clear. Again, if you didn't pause the video and take down this formula first, I think that's most important. Let's go ahead and try a couple of problems. Remember, take notes on the problems that I do. That's what I'm expecting in the photos. All right, let's take a look here. Um, first of all, I wanna show you this neat method of doing problems in the composite world here. So one of the methods you wanna think about is it's kind of like the old factory style, and I've showed you this before. So let's take a look at what they mean by this. So I'm gonna take a value and I'm gonna plug it into the F of X. Let's just do a quick example here. What do they want me to plug and chug? They want me to plug and chug three. That's the value I'm gonna plug in. So if I put in a three and a three comes into this function and this function says, hey, double whatever you give it. So that means it's coming out as a six. And now I'm gonna take it and go into this function. In that sense, it's G of six. I'm gonna plug and chug G of six, which means I'm gonna substitute six here and six there. And it looks like six plus three is gonna come out nine. So that's the basic idea and a nice cool visual. Let's see if we can try problem number 25. 
25. Now your assignment, I believe, is 26 through 34. So I'm going to do 25, and then I'll do 26, and then I'm going to try 58 over here, and we'll make this somewhat of a short video. All right, negative 2. Here's the pattern. We want to take negative 2, and we want to find where what the function x is, or uh, excuse me, h is. I was giggling at, in fact, I said what the function. So we're going to take negative 2, and we're going to plug it into h. Let's go find h. Here it is. So 25, this is what the homework will look like. G, per little circle, H, always write the question out. Negative 2. At the top of all your questions, you want to rewrite your function. Excuse me, I don't want to do that. I want to do X. You want to rewrite your functions just once at the top of all of these problems. And that way, your eyes aren't going from the screen to the paper, back to the screen. Let's see. Now, uh, my, I can be completely on paper right now. Let's take negative 2 and let's put that into h function. What is that? That would be a negative 2 parentheses squared. That's negative 2 times negative 2, which will be positive. And this will be positive 8. That's 4 plus 4. Now, we have to take the output. Remember, it's like going into the second function. Now, we had to take this output. Now, we got to do g of 8. Plug and chug that. All right. 8 now gets plugged and chugged into the g function. Looks like 16 is our answer. That's the basics of it. Let's try, oh, I don't know. Let's try 31. Let's try 31. No, let's use the same g and h. So let's try 26. I know I'm being random here. Here's your first homework problem. Okay. Rewrite question. Doesn't take too long. Don't complain. Plug and chug first, nearest equation first, nearest equation first. We're going to go h of 0, h is up here. We're going to put a 0 in, h of 0, h of 0 is 0 squared plus 4. Well, that looks like 4. So if I take 4, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to now go to g. So take 4, I'm going to go into the g function. g function simply says double whatever you give it. Final answer is 8. Box your answer so I can see it. All right, so to do the rest of these problems over here, just be mindful of what you're plugging and chugging. Look at number 29. I'm going to take 2, and I'm going to go into H. That means I'm going to go into X squared plus 4, get an answer, right? I think that's going to be 8. And then I'm going to take the at that value and go right back into the same function. So that one looks to be like, I don't know, 64 plus 4, so 68, I was doing 8 squared. So I did that quickly mentally. Make sure you do it on paper and make sure you have the right answer. One more problem here, 58. Look at how inside, this is kind of a PEMDAS thing. You know what the parentheses in PEMDAS mean? It means do inside parentheses stuff first. So the P doesn't mean do parentheses first, it means do inside parentheses first. So if you notice, there's a big parentheses on the outside where the f function is. g of 1 is on the inside. So let's execute. I'm going to do this problem right up here a little bit better. All right, let's execute g of 1. g of 1, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take g of 1, and we're going to put that value right into the f function. So plugging and chugging. I hope you got plugging and chugging down by now. We've been doing that a while. Looks like I get a 5 there. So I get a 5 coming out of the g function. Now we're going to put it into the f function. So that's going to be a 5 minus 2 over 3. 3 over 3 is 1. There you go. So I think you have to do the 59 and 60. So I think I've set you up on how to do each of these problems. I hope this helps. Remind, remember, you can check in at office hours, too, during the block period. Have a wonderful day, and uh, be safe out there.